what is going on everyone it is Gary and today I'm going to give you guys a tutorial doing a cool header or a banner whatever you guys want to do it's going to be going with this whole entire noise grain feel and I personally think this is really cool it's very kind of modern has a cool vibe to it it's actually really easy to do so we're going to go right into this so things you're going to need um we're going to get one image off of Google which is going to help with the background the rest we're going to make inside Photoshop itself and then of course I'm going to be using my logo to be a part of this so when you first get into Photoshop, what you want to do is go to File, New, and then it's basically create a new document. Now, since this is going to be a Twitter header, I'm going with 1500 width, a 500 height, and um, 72 resolutions, perfectly fine. You can hit Create, and then we're basically going to start straight off with the background. Now, going into the background, what you want to do is go to Google, and you're going to look up Hand on Glass Wallpaper. Now the reason behind this is you're gonna find these kind of like eerie looking wallpapers and it might not look much to you now but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're actually gonna put it to black and white and we're gonna blur it so you can find basically any image you want to use I would recommend trying to find an image that has a very um, white based area like a very brightness in the background the quality has to be pretty decent we are gonna be blurring it but regardless you don't want the pixelation so basically go through these find whichever one you want to use now I'm just gonna grab just a random one just so we can basically figure out what's gonna work just right click copy the image and then we're gonna paste it in and then you can basically just put it there and go to file blur and Gaussian blur and you can put the blur up a lot to about 30% this is going to make a really cool blur go to image adjustments and then go to black and white and this is going to be basically our background um, base for everything so now that we have that, we're going to start labeling everything. So we're going to label this, just put on wallpaper. And we're going to go to filter, noise right here, and go to add noise. Now we're going to add noise, but you want to make sure that the distribution's on uniform and it's monochromatic. And you're basically going to raise it up probably between, you know, 5 and 8. Because we're going to be adding noise like over and over again. So you don't want to put it too much. I'm using 6.30. And this is going to be basically the background portion. Now this is all said and done. We're going to start working basically from the back all the way to the front. So what you want to do is grab your image or your logo, excuse me. You can basically use any logo you want. Um, I'm just using my personal logo just because it's a lot easier and it has um, cool kind of lines I want to use. So when you first import your logo, you want to leave it the, basically the size that it comes in. And the reason behind this is we're going to want to add just cool little effects to this. So I'm just going to take this, maybe make it actually a little bit bigger. And I'm going to leave like these three lines in it. So we're going to have something like this. Now I'm going to go to the layer, right click, go to blending options, color overlay, and I'm going to make this a darker gray. I don't want to make it black because we're going to want other things on top of it. So I'm going to make this like a really dark gray, probably around like a centimeter or two off the bottom, just so we have a nice separation right here, but it's not too much. So after we're done with that, make a new layer, merge these two, so click the first layer, hold shift, click the second, hit control E, go to noise, excuse me, go to filter, noise, add noise, and we're basically going to be doing this over and over again. So now that we have that done, I'm going to add just a logo really quickly just so I have it in there. Now you just want to import the logo again, and this time you can just make it as small as you want and then just put it straight in the middle. Now this is going to be the logo that's focusing straight in the middle. If you guys do not have the new Photoshop that locks your layers in like this, I get a lot of comments on my videos. Double click on the background so it unlocks and hit Control T and then grab your rulers and put them in the middle like this. Now it's gonna really help if you do it right first off, but it's really gonna help when you're doing on work just because centering things is a huge part. So now that we have that, we're going to take the wallpaper in the background and hit Control J and we're going to bring it to the top and hold Alt and then put it on the logo. So create basically a clipping mask and then we're going to grab the wallpaper and we're going to move it so that it has this kind of gradient on it, but it doesn't look like we just took a gradient map and just put it on it. Now it's going to have its own little feel to it. We're going to right click on the logo, go to blending options, we're going to go to inner shadow and we're going to create an inner shadow on overlay on an opacity of like 10 
size of one and a distance of two and it's just going to create a kind of like a little depth look to it um it's nothing like really really crazy but it does help making things um stand out a little bit more and have that kind of edgy pop to it if you want to do add more to this you guys can add inner glows and stuff like that so you can add an inner glow of white and then you can put it to like precise the size down and then you can mess with the opacity but i personally just want to leave with the inner shadow and leave it like that so now that we have that we're going to be adding just a cool little border stroke around in the background take your logo and make sure that it is white and then go to fill put it to zero percent blending options then go to the effects click on stroke and then put an inner stroke on of about like whatever has a decent stroke now if your logo is bigger it's gonna have different sizes but whatever looks good to you and you're gonna basically take this and merge a new layer so it turns into one and then drag it back into your piece and then you're gonna put it below your little rectangles or whatever you use for your logo and then you're gonna take your blending option and put it to soft light now we can take this and we can shrink it if we don't think that it's a little bit too big and we can just put this like right over here and now you're going to take your eraser put it to like a size like maybe 300 and a harness of zero and just kind of click around and then you can duplicate it put it above the rectangles put it somewhere else and then erase it like that and that's just to kind of create a cool little like circuit board little effect that you can't get as quickly so now that we have that done now you want to add just these kind of cool effects going around everywhere else so you can make new layers above everything and grab your polygon tool up here and then just start making shapes now you can just basically hold shift and make shapes like this put the fill up let's say we're gonna put this one all the way to black do it like that we're gonna put one right here now you always want to do these shapes on the same the, the, the same color you want to do it on the same exact um layer and the reason behind this is because we're going to be merging layers and then putting noise grains on them so let's just say that's going to be the black one we're going to label this black rectangles and then if you think you want to move something, all you have to do is highlight it and grab your move tool and move it over. So, make a new, another new layer, grab that polygon tool again. And we're going to start making other ones. I'm going to be using an off-white, so kind of like a really light gray. And uh, it's basically the same thing. Now you're going to want to keep just adding weird shapes in here. If you some reason cannot make a perfect rectangle... All you have to do is grab your, um, was it Marquee tool or whatever it's called? No, yeah. And then it's basically delete it. So, very easy. So let's just say we're going to add a few more shapes. And then we're going to just put maybe one rectangle here. And we're going to label this layer white. Now we're going to go to the white first and go to noise. So filter and noise and add noise and we're going to put it up a little bit more because since it's white you're going to be able to see it a little bit less. And we're going to put that okay. We're going to go to the black one and we're going to go to noise and then since this is black we're going to put this down a little bit. So it's not as much. Now that we have that we can go under the black rectangles and the white rectangles and hit B on your keyboard to grab up that brush. Put the size down to like a 50. Um, keep your hardness on zero. And you're going to want to create little shadows under these black ones. Now, you don't have to follow the um, the rules of light when you're doing this. And then you're just going to go to noise, add noise, and you're going to add noise to those as well. And this is just going to create like a drop shadow of noise. So now that we have that, it's basically up to you where you want to take this. Now, you can add color in ways. The Personally, the way I would do it is I would take your brush right here and put the size on like two grab your pen tool and then it's basically make little strokes so once you make a new stroke you can put it to your brush and you can make it any color you want at first so just basically make a couple cut lines holding shift and then right click go to fill path or stroke path and make it a brush stroke 
So let's say we're gonna do about two more of these. So one right there, let's go one right here. Now we can right click on this layer up here, go to blending options, and we're gonna go to color overlay. And we're gonna make this let's just a blue. Now we can do that, we can actually add an outer glow of a really bright blue as well, if we would like. Just make sure that the size is not as pronounced. So like size of one would be good. So this has a kind of a little bit, little bit of a glow. So that's how you add color. And then you can finish it off with just say like text. And you can put like, um, tutorial person. Just basically take that text, shrink it up a little bit. Now with text on Twitter headers, you don't want to make it too big. And then what you can do with this, if you would like, is you can either leave it a certain color. For example, we're going to leave it just like this white. And then we could take a rectangle. We're going to put it to like a same blue. We can just scroll up and grab the same color blue. And then we can add like a little bit of bar here. Just to kind of create more color and stuff like that. So that's basically how you make this kind of cool um, noise grain style header. It's very easy to do. I'm going to be leaving the link to download this in the description below. It only took us about 12 minutes. It's not hard at all. And this is basically where you want to take this into your own creativity. And the first thing I do want to say after this video is my website is finally up. You guys can click on it and check it out. It is in the description below. Also, the intro has it on the title. Just basically go through it. Um, everything's not up to date yet. If you click on some of the projects, you're going to see a little bit of um text and then it's going to say more coming soon. I have endless amounts of work I had to end to the, or put into this. But um, you guys can check it out. You guys can check out a lot of my work. You guys can check out the About Me page. And then you guys can contact me if you have any questions. You guys want to purchase anything. Stuff like that. So in the description below, you guys can download the template for this. And also the one that I made earlier before this video. And it's just really easy, really fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just make sure to send me some work, some of your work that you guys copied from this tutorial. I'd love to see it. And um, join my Discord. So thank you guys so much for bearing with my channel. And I'll have a lot more updates coming out of what's going on later on in the future. So I'll see you guys later on. Peace out.